Hi, welcome to Yofi's Home. I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. Today we are going to be talking about a subject that I am very often asked about, and that is how we raise our multilingual children. Now, let me say something. This is not going to be your typical video because if you want to know from professionals and linguists and teachers and everyone the proper ways to do this, there are plenty of educational videos and blogs and research and articles about that. That video is not this. This is going to be how we do it, what we do at home, what works for us. It may or may not work for you. Um, a lot of it is not the recommended way to do it, but it has been working for us. So if you would like to hear about how we raise our multilingual children at home, then why don't you come on in, kick off your shoes and stay a while. I'm really glad you're here. Okay guys, let's just get right into it. So the very first thing that we use um, to support our multilingualism at home is we use music in many different languages. So wait, let me give you a little bit of background. I can't just jump into it. This would not be a Yovi video if it wasn't 20 minutes long, right? I mean, that's just it is what it is. My husband is half Spanish, half French. So he was raised speaking Spanish and French. And I was born in Serbia, but I grew up in Canada and the United States. So I grew up speaking Serbian as my mother tongue, um, English and French in Canada, and then of course, English in America. Uh, I also speak a bit of Spanish. I understand much more than I speak. And then Dutch in process, can we say? Can we even say that? I speak baby Dutch, let's say. <laughs> so these are the languages that we are using in our home and we are educating and teaching our children all of them at once. We just are. So yeah, so when I say that we use music to support um, our languages, this means that we have CDs or records or whatever in all of the languages. Um, and, you know, one day I'll put on a Serbian CD with kids songs or songs that I like that are like not super inappropriate for kids. Um, or, you know, the next time my husband will put on something in Spanish. Um, we received a lovely, a lovely good gift when our son was born from uh, my husband's sister about, you know, songs in Spanish for children that teach Spanish. They're not just like the typical Spanish songs, but they're actually meant for children who are learning Spanish as a second language. So they are very clear pronunciation about, you know, these are the colors or these are the vowels or whatever. So these kind of music things exist and it's great. And actually they're quite catchy and quite fun. And so instead of listening to, you know, Disney on repeat, um, we use this, we use music. So I love, I love Rafi for English. Um, I grew up with Rafi and his songs are beautiful and he uses real instruments and it's not Baby Shark and it's like real music that our kids love. Both of our kids really love Rafi. <laughs> it helps that mom loves Rafi too. Um, so that's for English. And then Rafi also sings sometimes in French and on rare occasion in Spanish. So we, you know, Rafi's great. Um, and then also there's a very famous Serbian children's choir they put out um, saw, like CDs in Serbian, Kolibri, if you are interested, but I'm sure if you know, if you know. Um, so Kolibri Hor, um, they have beautiful children's songs that are full of positive things that they're also teaching, you know, like about being kind and about doing the right thing and about taking care of the planet. But alongside learning these things, our kids are learning the language. So music is huge. That is hands down the number one thing. And that's it. Moving on. The next thing, and it's very similar to music, is YouTube. Um, I'm, you know, I'm on YouTube. So I can't say that I don't let my kids watch YouTube. I do. But with the caveat that anything that anytime that they're watching YouTube, I am sitting next to them, making sure that no, they're not watching like creepy, weird stuff. So there are plenty of educational clever programs on YouTube, um, things that kids can watch that will support their language. Um, for example, when we're uh, trying to support Dutch, um, 
I really let my son watch a lot of things about center class or um, um, Euphros. She's great. She, I mean, she's so sweet and I really like watching her too. Um, then there are like different songs or I mean, especially in the winter time, like anything about center class or smart to beat, like all of these things that I watch with my kid um, as we are trying to develop Dutch. So YouTube is a great resource for um, supporting another language. Um, also watching things like like from back in the day, like um, Fraggle Rock, for example, my husband really liked watching that when he was a kid. So when we wanna show Fraggle Rock to our kids, instead of showing it to them in English, we do use the Spanish version to support Spanish. So this is great. These are great little things that we use. Um, the kids enjoy it and they don't know the difference, but they're learning, they're soaking it up. They're just that, those accents, those words, they're getting absorbed in their brains and it will help them later. So YouTube music, huge, huge. The next thing that I would say is, especially if you're a, a parent to a small child, um, books that have sounds, but in different languages. So every time that we travel to Spain, we look for sound books where they'll talk about doing something in Spanish. Um, also my aunt, she lives in France. And so whenever she comes across like an interesting new book with sounds in French, she buys it and sends it to us. Um, so, you know, my kids have learned a lot of language from those books that they really enjoy reading and listening to the sounds. To go along with the books and those sounds, one thing that I will do is let's say we're reading a book with French sounds and we hear piscine, which means swimming pool. So, you know, the book will say piscine and then I will say, oh, na srpskom to je bazen, which means in Serbian, that means swimming pool. So I will immediately switch to Serbian and say it like what it is. And then I will say in English too. So. I really support the kids from like English and Serbian and then my husband does like more of the Spanish. Together we do French but also French is from my husband's mom and also when, whenever we go to France and Dutch is in the Netherlands. So we really try to reinforce and we don't follow that one parent one language um, advice. I know that that's the best advice out there or the advice that's like the most prevalent, but we don't do it. And it's been working for us. Like it's been fine. Our kids are learning different languages and it's, it's going great. So definitely I'm immediately saying like, that's, you know, whatever word we're learning about, I, I, I immediately transition to both languages and, and so does my husband. So that's how we support learning. And then they see it with a picture, you know, they know bear also like, that's just, it's okay. It makes, it makes sense to them at that age. So books and using language like that, um, it does take effort. I mean, it is not easy every day and it takes patience and it's annoying. It can be annoying sometimes, you know, I totally get it. Um, but when you're committed and when you really want to, when it's important to you, then you do that. And then you see the results, you know, later down the road, but yeah, hopefully, hopefully you do. The next thing that we do to support multilingualism with our children is that um, we have a variety of um, friend groups. You know, we have friends that speak Dutch, we have friends that speak English, we have friends that speak Serbian, Spanish, everything. And we try to organize playdates with those kids like on a rotating basis so that um, in particular our son who's old enough for playdates, our daughter's still a bit young, but that they are hearing those languages constantly and practicing them at the same time. So, um, so for example, my son, while now he's four and a half and he has a strong preference to say everything in English, um, when he is playing with his Dutch friends that don't speak English yet, cause they're, they're still a bit too small, he has to do it in Dutch and he does. And that's a way to get him to come out of his shell and to speak in Dutch and to, and to practice the language that he cannot practice with home with us at home. So play dates, um, you know, searching for people who speak the language that you're trying to um, support or emphasize is very, very helpful. The next thing that we do um, is mostly with our son because he's now old enough to want to push back. Um, 
our son is very preferential, as I said, to English. Um, and he doesn't really want to, he just thinks that that's the only language that he needs. And that is not the case. Um, so what we try to do um, with him is we try to emphasize the benefits of being multilingual. So oftentimes when he'll say like, oh, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say it in Spanish or I don't want to say it in Serbian. We just remind him that it's good for him to know those languages. And we also try to demonstrate that. So I try to speak Dutch when I can in front of him. And even if I'm making mistakes or even if we end up switching to English, he knows that I'm trying to do it in another language. Or when we're in France, I speak French. When we're in Serbia, I speak Serbian. I just, you know, when we're in Spain, I try to speak Spanish. So, and and this is, you know, and then at the same time, I'll say like, Leo, did you notice that mommy was speaking to that shopkeeper in French? That's because I learned French and it's something that I know and I practice it and you know that's good for you and beneficial and it's a respectful way to approach someone and just to constantly emphasize the benefits and even if at this age they're being stubborn they're still getting it like in their ears you know they're still getting it and hearing it and at some point I hope it pays off but <laughs> that's just constantly reinforcing the benefits and telling them that it's important to not just choose one language that's easy. So yes, that would be another tip. A little bit going hand in hand with that. Um, I, and I encourage like my Serbian speaking family whenever we're together, even though everybody speaks English, that they speak in Serbian to him. And I do the same to them, to my kids, that we speak in Serbian in front of them. Um, Leo will all, most often always reply in English, but at least I understand that he understands what I'm saying. You know, if I ask him, that means, do you want a glass of water? And if he says like, yes, you know, I know that he understood me, which means he's understanding my language, which means he's gonna be able to speak it at some point, you know? That's like very important for me. It's important for my husband, he does the same. So he'll speak to him in Spanish. And even if Leo responds in English, we're just going to keep going. We're just going to keep going with our languages and, you know, ask him to respond if he wants to in our language. But if he doesn't, we let him because there's no point in fighting about it now or being super aggressive with him. But I know that he's getting it. And he also, he also has really impressed us sometimes, especially when he was very, very young. Um, my husband always tells this story um, when I was doing something and Papa asks Leo, like, Leo, where's Mama? And Leo said to him, Mama se culpa. And Alex looked at him and goes, I don't know what that means. And then Leo looked at his dad and in Spanish said, Ducha, Mama Ducha, which basically he translated from Serbian to Spanish that Mama was having a shower. And I think he was maybe two and a half, two and a half or three years old. So he was already translating and he does that for us sometimes. We will be speaking about something and then Leo will just look at one and then translate into the other one's language. So it's incredible that a four-year-old is doing that, um, but he does it. And I think it's as a result of all of these like ways that we are just using all of the languages every day in our home. Another thing that we do is that I like to share funny words. This is something that I do with them a lot, like old words or funny words or s something that's silly that I find like or like tongue twisters or, you know, like these funny things that you can do um, in language. And I share that, especially with the four-year-old now, but my, you know, 17 month old is always there. She's there, she's listening, she's getting it. Um, but just to share like, oh, you know, in Serbian, we have this funny expression and we say it like that, or, you know, you do this or you do that. And he likes it. He likes to hear the funny things and he likes to know that they're funny and that why they're funny and, and then he learns. So sharing things like that um, just really opens their minds and helps them. So, so those are kind of all the things that we do with our kids. But then there's one other thing that we have to do with ourselves and that is to practice patience. I mentioned it earlier, but it's also with patience of letting them develop at their own um, pace. So I say this because my son was already like speaking quite a few words and in quite a few different languages when he was my daughter's age and my daughter is not. So 
I'm not stressed out about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm just going to continue doing what we did with our son and let her develop at her own pace. So not every child is the same. Not all the things that work for us are going to work for you. Trying different tactics, trying a different approach, but at the same time being patient and understanding and kind goes a long way. Um, so even though my daughter is not using too much verbal communication, she is an expert and has been since she was, I don't know, six months old at communicating her needs to you in a different way, in a nonverbal way. So she is very good um, at that. So she, I think, doesn't need to rely on language as much as our son did, who was not as good at nonverbal communication. Um, but I know she'll get there. And, you know, this is all for them um, trying to be the best or give them the best opportunity to speak um, and to do those things and at the same time being understanding and patient that they're you know maybe they're not going to pick it up as quickly one as the other so and that's okay because we are all different and we all have different strengths and different weaknesses and not everyone's the same so that is just like a tip to keep in mind as a parent because I know we want them we want the immediate results we want those like right away like oh yeah i taught him this now and now he's gonna know it forever it doesn't happen that way always you know sometimes it does of course and that's great but sometimes it doesn't and so yeah patience that's a skill that i'm still learning in my advanced age but <laughs> you know i'm i'm not the most patient person but it's always a good reminder. And now I just want to share like a, a quick little funny, I think it's funny, I hope you find it funny story. Um, basically our son goes to an English speaking school in the Netherlands um, and this is in no way a comment on the Dutch educational system, which I think is excellent, but we had to put him in an English speaking school due to what I perceive as our own incompetencies in the sense that we don't speak Dutch. So neither my husband nor I felt comfortable that we could help support his learning. Um, I wouldn't be able to read to him in Dutch, um, going to parent teacher conferences in Dutch, these kind of things that I would feel like I couldn't support my child's education and learning in the Dutch language. Um, so we opted to put him in an English speaking school. And in this school, um, the majority of the teachers come from the UK. So they're speaking with, um, like a UK accent. It is adorable to hear my four-year-old son <laughs> speaking English with a British accent. Um, and now he's gotten to the point where he's correcting my English. And I'm like, you're four. <laughs> How are you doing this? But the two things I did want to mention, which I just found very funny, was um, one day he asked me, what day is it today? And I said, oh, it's Tuesday. And he goes, no. And I was like, well, yesterday was Monday tomorrow is Wednesday so the day in between is Tuesday and I'm like trying to do it all like ex explainy and he goes no no mom it's not Tuesday it's Tuesday <laughs> Tuesday and so he was just correcting my American accent into the correct British one so I just found that very very funny and also a similar thing with the number 20 that we are, you know, when he's learning counting and they're all, all those things at school. And so the number 20 is his favorite. And so he, I don't know, he loves it. So every time that he sees it, he's like, mom, what's that number? And I'll say, it's 20. And he goes, mm -mm, it's not 20, it's 20. Come on. <laughs> so I just, I find this very um, amusing and very funny. And then um, yeah, I tell him, well, in, you know, in British English, it's 20 and in American English, which mommy speaks and that's okay, is I'm going to say 20. Um, so it's even within a language that he is familiar with and knows like he is noticing a little bit the differences and, um, correcting those differences. So anyway, you guys, that's it. What do you think about the things that I've said? Um, if you are raising multilingual children, what tips and advice do you have for others who are maybe starting on their journey? What has been helpful? What has maybe not been the most successful way that you've um, approached the subject? I would love to know. I'm sure other people would love to know. So please let us know in the comments. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Um, it helps YouTube recommend it to other people, which helps you know, it helps me and it helps others. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, 
And if you like me, if you like my channel, please click the subscribe button if you haven't already. So I appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm so grateful and thankful for the time that you spend with me today. Thank you for coming over. Thank you for being here, for watching. I'm very grateful that you chose to spend your time with me today. So thank you again, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.